So what does Darth Vader have in common with Sarkasugas? So we know Darth Vader, a.k.a. Anakin Skywalker, a.k.a. Little, little Annie, grew up in Tatooine, a planet in Star Wars. It turns out Tatooine, Tunisia is a real place where they film partial Star Wars, and that's what found Super Sarkis. Now, Super Sar Sarkis is a very important animal because I hear about it a lot from kids, so I thought, why not today's topic would be Sarkasukas? But again, to do the official start, hey kids, it's Jurassic James, and it's interesting to explain, we're looking at Sarkasukas, the whole story. Now, his first discovery, uh, a French paleontologist back in 18, like, 50, 59, 50, you know, like that time, went to the Sahara over several years. And the idea is, in paleontology, today we think about, oh, you have planes and equipment, but you're going to Sahara Desert with limited resources, and you're, you know, hiking around, trying to collect stuff, and get enough specimens to be shipped back. That's a huge undertaking. And so, there were teeth, uh, scoots, bone fragments found. It wasn't until uh, later on where they actually found a, a whole skull. And so, the name Sarkasukis actually was coined in, in, in 1866. So, we know it was a giant croc thing at this time. But since then, of course, we found more discoveries. In fact, uh, Paul Serino, a paleontologist, has added like six new species. But the main thing to point out here, same rules apply, older to newer models. And the first Dr. Supers I ever received was this one here. This little guy is the safari. What year is this? It doesn't tell you, does it? No, so safari has little tubes. You have tubes of prehistoric fish, prehistoric reptiles. There's multiple prehistoric crocs, and this was in there. And overall, it's really good. Now, one thing to point out with Dr. Supers too is that. Uh, with dinosaurs, I always call them dino birds or lizard birds. With Sarcosuchus, it is a crocodile-like animal, but it's actually not a true in the family of crocodiles. It's a group called Philidosaurs. So basically, we have crocs and their cousins, basically. So they look very similar, kind of like how we have like monkeys and apes. So they you know, they look overall similar, but they're different things in general. So looking at a modern croc today, we have this, we have well, when you think of crocs today. You think of three things. You got one, like the saltwater crocodile, like this, reaching up to, two, up to six meters long. The males get really big. We have alligators in North America, and also there's a population of alligators in China. And also, we have the, I would say gurio. These guys are from India, and they have these really long, narrow snouts. Now, first and foremost, looking at them today, they are all within a crocodile family, but they are different uh, variations on it. I do not have any caiman, if you're wondering. There aren't any caiman toys I'm aware of. If they are, put a link in the description, please, uh, in the comment section, please. But the idea is that if you look at these three the animals, I want to use the same analogy that people will say, okay, this is, these are crocs today, these are prehistoric crocs like things. It's kind of like looking at a, a, a bird today and saying, well, whatever we don't know about dinosaurs, we can just fill in with bird stuff. These are still different animals and they're still separated by millions of years. So again, they're a good template to go by, how they work and interact. interact. But overall, we can't say, well, whatever this guy did, this guy did. That's not how paleontology works. You want it to be that way, but we can't. Uh, because there are unknown mysteries in this situation that we just can't predict. So, with that being said, I will point out one fun thing, is that they have, we have never found a complete skeleton of a, of a Sarkasuchus, but I can tell you for fun fact that a with modern crocs and alligators, they have five fingers and four toes. Fun fact, frogs have four fingers and five toes. Why? I don't know. It's not really connected. Just know that. But with that being said, we are under the impression that these guys are the same setup. And this particular small toy has five fingers, five toes. I'm not going to say it's wrong because we don't have the whole hand, my understanding of this animal. But again, we would try to make some kind of connection with the modern world. Uh, and again, I often say the smaller figures, I kind of give them a pass. They're so small, you can't engineer certain things. Uh, my next Sarkasukas figure is this one here from Collect A 2009. I would say on, on the official record, this Collect A 2009 Sarkasukas is the most accurate model one out there. Scientifically speaking, uh, many people use this, and you know, I use it on my own website for this example of this animal. And it has, of course, five fingers and four toes, so it's at least doing that pretty part right. You may notice that it's a very thin, narrow skull and it's bubbles in the end. That is very similar to the garo. And we're thinking that garo, they mainly eat fish, basically, right? And so when you are in the water and you open your mouth, if you have a open, a big flat skull, that pushes against the water, basically. And my example of this is when you're riding in a car, and you put your hand out the window, uh, and you're, if you put your hand like this, the wind's going to be pushing on it. If you put, and so it's harder. If you put your hand like this, it'll kind of glide through like a wing better, right? So the idea is that with this skull, if it has a very narrow skull, it can open easier in the water and stuff like that, versus one that's flat, that's more pressure against it. And so 
we do know that they've had eight, you know, eight fish. In fact, there's a uh, fun fact. There's a, a, essentially a, I think, 18 foot fish, <laughs> see what can't, former see what can't, found in their environment, but that's a little, a little later. And so overall, I mean, it, they have scoots, we find their scoots, and scoots are often, it's a slang term. The real term is osteoderms, so it means bones in the skin. So crocodiles have these things from here on their whole body. And you say, why, why do they have them? One, they're fighting other croc-like animals. They live in with dinosaurs, uh, at least the prehistoric type. So it has all these major things you want to see in the animal. Um, there are still parts that I would say, I can't just throw my head, but I'm pretty sure there are things here that may be incorrect because we just don't have those parts of the animal. But again, we can't say it's exactly a croc because they're not they're a different group, but they're croc relatives. And we can still kind of cross it over a little bit more than we, what you would think. It's much easier to say that you pair these two animals than a parakeet and a triceratops. That's, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, looking forward, we're going to get to the Jurassic World ones. And I'm sorry there's no unboxing. I opened these a while ago. Uh, but basically the same figure re redone. And you can, and I, it's not like it so much is that they're bigger. They're more bulky. And you can see, again, that very narrow snout, the bulbous end. And, of course, the really thick muscular tail. Now, the feet have five fingers and five toes. So that's not, that's not, that's questionably inaccurate. But the big picture with soccer figures, in my opinion, is who it lives with. So I mentioned this in my last video, Io Kakaria. So uh, the one Paul Sorino uh, was digging up was in Niger, Africa. So that means its contemporaries, its 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 neighbors, basically, would be Sucasarcus. So it's found in the early Cretaceous, basically. So um, Sucasarcus was there, but not, not quite Spinosaurus. We have Eocacaria, the relative of Carcharodontosaurus. So we're looking at the late Cretace early Cretaceous, like Spinosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. This is their like earlier Cretaceous relatives. The Iranosaurus, the Iguanodont, or actually Hadrosaur form. Uh, Herbivore basically fell back, and of course, my one of my favorites, Niger Saurus. I picked out the ones that are Jurassic World because I wanted to show you what if you have this figure, who it lives with. There is no, there's only like two toys Niger Saurus. This one is a collect a 2009, so same year as our little friend here. How about that? And so, the idea is that I, I really i am hoping that Jurassic World and their several figures, different species, rare things are. I hope they do a Niger Saurus. I'm really looking, if they do that, like, yes, because that's just a, it's a really interesting sauropod, um, and it's a relative of the, of the Plodocus with a vacuum cleaner-like mouth, so that's like, that should be its own video, but I'm trying to see if Jurassic World will make a toy first to kind of compare it to with the other models I have. So this is pretty much its environment, and of course, it, they, they find these uh, essentially 18-foot-long fish, a coelacanth, in their environment too, so, which, mm -hmm. so the hypothesis right now is that they, if they're younger, which we see in dinosaurs, we think many dinosaur species, predators, would eat certain things and when they're younger, and they become adult, they change their diet, basically. So that's been argued for Sarcosuchus. Now, I will point out that modern crocs don't really do that. I mean, obviously the prey depends on the size of the baby as it's growing. Uh, but on that note, I want to point out uh, parenting skills. We, we see that essentially all crocoids or any kind of crocoid animal living today have somewhat good parenting skills. Compared to mammals, of course, nothing's, you know, but baby alligator here. And so we know that, for example, with dinosaurs, there are some that weren't good parents, like sauropods. Uh, there were some, well, comparatively speaking. And there's some like the, uh, the oviraptor who would sit on the nest. And then there were some like the large theropods who would just put plants in the nest. That's important because today, modern crocs do not sit on their nest. They put vegetation over it, and that vegetation keeps up and that keeps that nest warm. And so what's really neat about that is in modern alligators and crocs at least, is that if the temperature of the nest is like I think ninety seven degrees or higher, they become their the babies become male if there's ninety seven ninety six degrees or lower the female. And of course the nest has different layers, so you have a mixture usually. So that's something we could never tell with a fossil animal, of course, unfortunately. But it, that's kind of the idea how these animals live and work, right? So next one I'll point out too, their relatives, and I mentioned that they are not crocodiles. They're in the crocodile order. They're that order, but not the actual family. So we have our, again, our modern groups right here. Uh, also found in Africa, but at a later time, Caprosuchus. So Caprosuchus means warthog croc, and it is from, this is a 2010 safari model. And this is a papa. I'm not sure, they didn't tell you the year, but it's Caprosuchus, and the mouth opens that way, actually. And so Caprosuchus means warthog croc. 
And so these are a different branch. Now, if you want to know more about this and more breakdown and classification, I'm going to put a link in the description where I have my uh, Archosaur Morph page. So Archosaur Morphs actually include dinosaurs and pterosaurs and birds. But to make it uh, simpler on my website, I, I put it all in, in one page, kind of kind of overviewing the thing. So when you click on it, some of the earlier animals are not crocodile-like. They're just archosaur distant cousins. But if you go further down the list, you'll see how they're all broken down by the different classifications. If you're interested in that kind of thing, there it is. Uh, if you're not, I understand. So uh, last thing to point out is this thing called a phytosaur. Now, I've mentioned before, this is also from the same tube of crocodile things from Safari. I, also, I mentioned before how... This identification, this is a very famous animal. And for me, I'll read about these creatures. I'll see a book, an article, okay, it's a new species, put it on my little list in my head. Uh, but when I see kids, particularly, I'm doing tours or classes, and they're all like, this thing, this thing, I'm like, okay, something's up. And so it's really known for me, this large croc. And it's just, it, you know, people know it. Small, the phytosaur is not a crocodile. It is a early, no, sorry, a late Jurassic group. And the idea with these guys here is that they have. I mean, they look superficially like crocodiles. I get that because they're holding, the, they're, they're occupying the same niche in the environment. And what's going on is that before them, there were, well, in the like Permian and, and you know, earlier, there were large amphibians in the environment. The Permian extinction happened and it wiped out a lot of those guys. So the archosaurus, you know, the, the traffic is the age of crocs basically, and the archosaurus began to rise up, and the phytosaurus took that role of being the amphibious, not amphibian, but a big A. But amphibious in between water and land, uh, carnivore, and the ancestors of modern crocs were living beside them. Or so it's going on that they were ruling, and then the the traffic Jurassic extinction event happened, and then crocodiles proliferate into what well, we the modern croc we know today. Their ancestors start really kind of expanding in the Jurassic period. So when I'm in a museum in Houston. You see the we have a large Sarcosuchus model. You know, it's attacking Illithrosaurus. And kids, all, every time I see kids saying, oh, Sarcosuchus, Sarcosuchus, I'm like, no, Sarcosuchus lives in North Africa, in the Middle Cretaceous period. This is Arizona, West Texas, in the late Jurassic period, for one thing. Second, phytosaurus, this is not the entire end-all, be-all, but just heads up. Their eye, their, the nostrils, the nars, the nose hole, is between their eyes, kind of like a, like a whale or a dolphin. But whereas these guys, it's down here in the bulbous tip, where, where crocs. Again, there's more to it than that, but I'm trying to keep it kind of simple for the, for the video. Uh, this is not a video on Archosaur Croc Morph Evolution, this is a video on Sarcosuchus. Last thing I want to point out with this animal, too, is that it's it's a growth rate because mammals, for the most part, we have a certain rate of growth. Dinosaurs, we, we see from, um, now these were uh, growth rings, pretty much people think of uh, tree rings, and what we describe that as, it's called arrested growth. So arrested being to be held, you know, if someone gets arrested by the police, they're held. So arrested growth means the animal stops growing. And what we're thinking is going on is that through seasons, we have less growth in the winter. We see it in trees, we see it in you know, animals with rings in our bones. And so we're looking at these rings, we can say, okay, each one of these arrested growth periods is a year. And it shows that Sarcosuchus, some of the larger individuals found are like 40 years old. Um, it's been estimated that some of them can live up to, well, they wouldn't reach their full, full size until they were like 60. I know that like modern crocs and alligators, they have they have accelerated growth, but then they kind of slow down. They continue, they can't continue growing. They just don't grow the same rate, basically. So um, the idea of an animal reaching full size at 60 is pretty impressive. But I do know, like for example, with white sharks and crocodiles today, uh, people you know the really really big ones are usually really really older, right? And so that's something we can associate with this animal too. That being said. This is Dr. Sukis. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave your comments below. YouTube loves comments. Oh, this is really fun to do this. This is really neat. I've never actually touched these. I, I kind of opened them and then I just put them away on the shelf. I didn't really, I don't play with them. But this is fun. This right here, this is fun. I don't know why. Okay, I'm going to stop. All right, see you guys later. Thank you.